Peste jumătate din populația lumii trăiește în orașe, iar în următorii 20 de ani procentul va ajunge la 68% potrivit ONU, ceea ce înseamnă zone din ce în ce mai mari, suprapopulate, consumatoare de energie poluatoare și dacă nu sunt luate măsuri, din ce în ce mai toxice. Așa că acum preocuparea specialiștilor se îndreaptă spre construirea unor orașe cât mai sustenabile, care să ofere o calitate a vieții celor care locuiesc acolo, dar să și protejeze mediul. Unul dintre cei mai cunoscuți cercetători în domeniu a explicat într-un interviu pentru News Hour CNN cum va ajuta inteligența artificială la construirea și adaptarea acestor orașe și cum va arăta viața unui om obișnuit peste doar 20 de ani. What do you think is going to be uh, changed in the life of a big city? How will be the life in a big city? Often, I don't know, usual citizen of a big city. These technologies will roll out faster in some areas than in other areas but you know i i hope that in the future in the big cities because if we have the sustainability people more, more people will want to come to these cities but i would like to imagine in a day-to-day -day life uh you know i wake up in the morning my coffee is made correctly it knows how strong it is my groceries are there a lot of us work from home today but if i do need to travel somewhere My transportation is quiet and clean and the sky is clear. So that is what we're driving for to make life in the big city better, uh, more sustainable. Um, and clearly there will be a difference. You know, take the perspective of your government. If you have a limited budget and you have a city that's working on these sustainable technologies to make the life better, to make people more prosperous, and you have another city who's resisting these technologies, As the government, who do you think will get more money, <laughs> more resources? Because the the sustainable city will be more attractive. So um, I think I think that is the the goal and the dream uh, to make make the quality of life better. There are some risks, but I think you know if we can put astronauts into space, we can monitor the technologies. It's having the policy. If you look at the pandemic, we the technology worked fine. But having a plan <laughs> to to use that technology of, uh, effectively, that's where things failed. We weren't willing to do what we needed to do. And that's where mm -hmm. we need engineering integrated with society. I think that we need to um, figure out a little bit how uh, will big cities will look in 15 years, let's say, from now, in 10 years from now. I mean, the whole point of the push for smart, sustainable cities is that we want to use information and communication technologies to help improve the quality of life, to make the city operation uh, more efficient, the services more convenient for the people, and to just improve uh, the quality of life. Um, the key components are uh, sustainable usage of our resources, right? So uh, we don't consume all of our resources today that our future children can enjoy. Uh, a wonderful future as well. Um, we also want to use uh, innovative technologies to harness the information that are that's out there and determine how we are using these uh, services to make our usage more convenient and more efficient. How can we use the, uh, these resources that you are talking about more sustainable? What I, as a person, need to do or have to do? Hopefully, uh, you won't have to do too much. In other words, okay. they're, they're trying to roll out these technologies as infrastructure, meaning it'll be in the background by adding sensors to the stoplights, to your cars, to your phone, to your watch. They will be able to collect data. And by collecting all of this data, and this is where the, the artificial intelligence comes into play, they'll be able to analyze that data to determine what is optimal and maybe... Uh, what will affect your future actions to help make things more convenient, more uh, transportation on time, more energy heating, better for you. Um, so the AI will be a key component to also collecting information from all of these sensors that are in the devices, in your coffee maker, in your car. <laughs> so uh, it will be collecting all of that data and using it efficiently. Some cities won't have it. And for them, Uh, it'll be much like the cities today, where you have pollution, you have fossil fuels, mm -hmm. you have inconveniences. They won't notice any different because it's their it's their life. It will only be if you go from a sustainable city to an unsustainable city that you will notice a big difference. Because, you know, I'm at home, I, I use the internet all the time. It's only when that goes out 
that I realized, how can people live this way? So it'll only be the comparison between uh, the sustainable city and the unsustainable city that you'll notice a different difference. The, the sustainable city will be, they'll have a, they'll be happier. <laughs> they'll hopefully have a, a better quality of life. Whereas, you know, the unsustainable cities, maybe not so